the floor. Let the body sit the floor. Let the body sit the floor. Let the body sit the floor.
twists and turns, you say. WWE gave us an absolute burial of everybody going into WrestleMania season that is not named Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. One very, very important detail that WWE is seemingly missing out on. We're getting a champion versus champion match. But what really makes this any different than the Survivor Series? Where it's champion versus champion. Raw versus SmackDown. WWE, at the end of the day, is giving us a Survivor Series main event at WrestleMania. What do they need to change? And what exactly is the outcome of this Elimination Chamber match tonight? I'm going to tell you what exactly needs to be done. And if it's not, WrestleMania will suffer. The Women's Elimination Chamber match. Bring your pillow. Take your NyQuil. It was a snooze fest. WWE did none of those ladies any favor tonight in what was one of the most boring Elimination Chamber matches that they've ever done. Goldberg! Farewell, my friend, to the old age home you go. And Lita! I don't mind Lita being back in WWE if the performance she gave us is what she can bring to the table. I don't mind Lita being back at all. Ladies and gentlemen, it is happy hour somewhere. And it's definitely happy hour at the OTS venue. I'm going to the venue. My beverage is ice cold. I hope you guys have one yourselves, but I got one question before I get the hell out of here, man. What the fuck are you guys drinking? I'll see you over there.
What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. This is your Elimination Chamber 2022 post-show right here on Off The Script. I am JD from New York, and this is the OTS venue. Thank you guys for joining me on your Saturday afternoons, wherever you may be, hopefully with a fine alcoholic beverage in your hand. The Elimination Chamber. It was reported in the days leading up to the show that WWE would give us twists and turns for the Elimination Chamber. Did we get any twists and turns? Yes. Not in the way that I would have liked. But WWE ultimately, A, gave Brock Lesnar the Royal Rumble for absolutely no reason. B, gave Bobby Lashley the WWE title for absolutely no reason. And C, has one major problem on their hands with this now confirmed champion versus champion match with Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, which should be taking place on night two on Sunday. The entire Elimination Chamber concept is dead. It is dead. First of all, WWE gave us two Elimination Chamber matches tonight. They actively changed the rules without anybody knowing The Elimination Chamber matches usually start off with two men or women. And every five minutes, I believe, the counter goes off and we get participants in the ring in five-minute intervals. WWE shortened that by more than half. They did two minutes tonight instead of five. I don't know why they needed to rush through the show. I thought tonight's show was an absolute waste of time. I thought the Elimination Chamber matches were very boring. Lesnar and what he did in the match, I'll get to that in a second. The men's match was obviously better than the women's match. There were things I liked about the men's match. They actually used the Chamber as a weapon. The women barely did not. I don't know why you need to change the overall feel of the Elimination Chamber when the concept is already a dead one. It's a dead concept. And WWE further buries the concept of the Elimination Chamber where it doesn't really hold much value at all in the Road to WrestleMania build. The men's match featured AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, Austin Theory, Matt Riddle, Brock Lesnar, who won the Royal Rumble, but Decided to get into the Elimination Chamber match. Don't really understand that, but I think we all are in the know by this point that Lesnar and Reigns are the star attraction for WrestleMania. And then the WWE Champion, Bobby Lashley, who beat Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at the Royal Rumble. The match starts off with Austin Theory and Seth Rollins. And then something happens there. I believe Riddle was in the match at that point as well. Something happened there where Austin Theory got powerbombed. You know how Seth Rollins does the buckle bomb or the powerbomb against the barricade on the outside. He did a powerbomb to Austin Theory that ultimately took out Bobby Lashley and WWE played this off as a concussion injury or a concussion protocol. Supposedly, Bobby Lashley's skull hit one of the metal beams in the pod when Seth Rollins powerbombed Austin Theory through the plexiglass and Austin Theory landed on Bobby Lashley, ultimately injuring him in the process. Adam Pearce is out there. Officials, doctors are out there. Bobby Lashley's playing it off as if he can't stand on his own two feet. They usher him out of the match. Five minutes later, Michael Cole deems Bobby Lashley via the medical team unqualified to compete. We will be guaranteed a new WWE champion. Brock Lesnar comes in. 
He demolishes AJ Styles, demolishes Seth Rollins, which is fucking pathetic. It's quite sad that Rollins, doing the best work of his individual career away from the Shield, has been reduced to fucking nothing. 1F5, Seth Rollins, gone. AJ Styles, one of the best professional wrestlers on this planet, gone. Matt Riddle, eliminated. It was down to Lesnar and Austin Theory. Austin Theory may have been the MVP of this match, in my honest opinion. He took a fucking beating. He was murdered, slaughtered in this match. He sold Brock Lesnar as good as anybody I've recently seen, and he took a fucking F5 off one of the pods. Yes, Lesnar climbed the cage, stood on the pod, and gave him an F5 off one of the chamber pods. Ultimately, that is what did Austin Theory in. There was a suplex on one of the outside spots, which obviously now are covered by padding. Imagine if this was the old chamber and Lesnar did that German suplex on Austin Theory in the old chamber. Jesus fucking Christ. Now you guys know why those chambers are padded. Austin Theory bumped around for Lesnar as good as anybody I've seen. Austin Theory is fucking great. I love Austin Theory. Lesnar wins the championship. He's the new WWE champion. Bobby Lashley never lost. Bobby Lashley never lost the championship. He was taken out and it wasn't his fault. These are the twists and turns that WWE had reported to be undertaking in this Elimination Chamber show. So now we got Brock Lesnar as the WWE Champion. They had the graphic already, all pretty for WrestleMania. Lesnar, the WWE Champion. Reigns, the Universal Champion. Champion versus Champion, right? What is the likely outcome here? This is where the twists and turns come into play. The only thing that makes sense here is Bobby Lashley getting a WrestleMania main event with Brock Lesnar to reclaim the title that he never lost, ultimately continuing the Lesnar and Lashley feud because there's money to be made in a feud with these guys, not just doing one match for the sake of doing one match. There is money in another match. Lesnar lost because of Roman Reigns to Bobby Lashley. This is going to be another major match in the Lesnar and Lashley chapter of whatever they're telling here, the story that they're telling here. Bobby Lashley's not going to win the WWE Championship. He's going to remain titleless. This will give Lesnar his win back over Bobby Lashley so that when they're finished with this at WrestleMania, they will both have one win and one loss against each other. And that's it. They want to do a rubber match, they could do it at SummerSlam. Or whenever. I doubt there'll be a rubber match. This may be it. I don't see really any other reason for them to wrestle after this. I put this out on Twitter immediately after the match was over when Lesnar won the WWE Championship. People coming at me. Oh no, it's going to be Ronda versus Charlotte at the main event of WrestleMania in night one. No, it's not. I don't know on what fucking planet you guys are on where you think Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair is a bigger main event than Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. What? what are you fucking mental? What are you guys drinking tonight? Re- legitimately, really? You must be fucking drunk. The only outcome here is a WWE Championship and a Universal Championship spotlight. Lesnar Lashley, night one. Yes, Lesnar is being paid enough money where he could wrestle both nights. Lesnar Lashley, night one. The winner of that match gets Roman Reigns on night two, which, of course, will be still Brock Lesnar. The outcome is going to be very, very, very easy. Lesnar and Reigns. At least WWE is giving us Lashley and Lesnar possibly still taking place at WrestleMania while ultimately serving Roman Reigns, Lesnar, on a platter and making him the biggest universal champion that probably will ever live within the walls of WWE. It's all about building Reigns up for Dwayne Johnson. That is it. That's the story. Who's going to take down Roman Reigns? There's a reason why Roman Reigns has been saying, I'm in God mode now. There's a reason. He's defeated everybody. 
There's nobody left. The only one really left after Brock Lesnar is Drew McIntyre. And we know Drew McIntyre is not beating Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns will take both of those championships into WrestleMania. Well, maybe not both. I don't know what WWE's got planned. At least one of them. The Universal Championship, at least. He will take at least the Universal Championship into next year's WrestleMania. And he will go one-on-one with The Rock, who I predict will come out at the end of WrestleMania when he is crowned both Universal and WWE Champion. That's what it should be. Lesnar Lashley, night one. The winner gets Reigns on night two. Ronda and Charlotte is not a main event WrestleMania match. I don't give a shit what you think or who you are. That match, based off tonight's performance, is going to fail. Now, the biggest thing that I question here, and I said it in the intro, Lesnar and Reigns says champion versus champion. What does that mean? If it said champion versus champion, then it's very similar to what WWE does at the Survivor Series. Champion versus champion means that no belts are on the line. Well, the WWE Championship is not on the line here. So Reigns, if he's in a champion versus champion match, he won't be able to win The WWE Championship. WWE could clearly change the rules. Lesnar has been wanting a champion versus champion match for all these weeks. I don't know why he would want that and then the title not be on the line. The Universal Championship should be on the line and the WWE Championship should be on the line. Champion versus champion means to me, unless it's specified, no champion can lose their belt here. It's just Reigns versus Lesnar. That's the same thing we get at the Survivor Series. I hope WWE realizes that. That is a very misleading fucking graphic that they put up at the end of the Elimination Chamber tonight. It needs to read title versus title. And then you could do champion versus champion and spin it however you want. But you need to specify that the championships are on the line in the main event of WrestleMania. Otherwise, it's not really a WrestleMania main event. They need to specify that completely. They did not specify title versus title. All they said is champion versus champion. Unless I hear it from Michael Cole's mouth, then I'm not going to sit here and say that's what WWE fed us tonight. It needs to be champion versus champion. So I hope that that is rectified. I really do. Lesnar is not walking out of WrestleMania any champion. He's going away. He's going back to Saskatchewan. Reigns is going to be both champions. Now, I have been talking about this for several weeks now. I think the best thing to do is unify the titles and have one world champion. Reigns is going to be on Raw, and Reigns is going to be on SmackDown. WWE is so creatively inept. It's so creatively inept that they need Reigns on both shows because they failed to build up anybody that could even compete at the same level. And let me tell you, there's really nobody on Monday Night Raw that is good enough to be in the ring with Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins is owed a rematch, probably. You could get another match out of that, another feud out of that. You could do the Bobby Lashley match against Reigns if you want to visit that. Reigns being a double champion on both shows may be overload. It may be overload. But that's what they're going with. Because Reigns is the only legitimate superstar that they have. He's the biggest name in the entire sport. I would end the brand split. I don't think we need dual brands. I don't think we need a Raw and SmackDown brands to be separate. I think the brand split should be over. That's what really should be with this match. Lesnar and Reigns to end the brand split. One championship, unify the fucking titles. But WWE is only highlighting champion versus champion. They didn't really specify that that, that, uh, the match will be title versus title. Now, maybe we get those words and that verbiage on Monday Night Raw or Friday Night SmackDown, but as far as I'm concerned, I didn't really hear anything about either title being on the line. I hope so. Otherwise, the match doesn't make any sense. But the logical outcome here is Lashley getting a match against Lesnar at WrestleMania, and the winner of that match goes on to wrestle Roman Reigns. That's the only thing that Bobby Lashley should be asking for. The match should not take place on Monday Night Raw I don't think it should. I don't, I don't really know what WWE is planning to do. They could easily do that match on Monday Night Raw to boast the rating. 
on Monday night. I could see them doing that. But the match Bobby Lashley should get, because there's really nothing else for him to do right now on Monday Night Raw, is do Lashley and Lesnar night one of WrestleMania for the WWE Championship, and then Lesnar beats Lashley, gets his win back, goes to WrestleMania night two, and defends that title against Roman Reigns, where Roman Reigns is unified as the WWE and Universal Champions of World Wrestling Entertainment. I do not like that they destroyed Seth Rollins in this match. I do not like that they destroyed AJ Styles. Matt Riddle was a non-factor in this match because he's got a storyline going on with, uh, with Randy Orton right now. Austin Theory was only in there because of the rumor that Shane McMahon was supposed to be in there, so they replaced Shane McMahon with Austin Theory. I thought he held his own in there. Like I said, he was the MVP to me in this match, the way he bumped around. That was a very impressive performance by Austin Theory. So that is the WWE Championship situation. Is it a twist and turn? Not really what I was expecting, but WWE thinks that they're creating compelling television, and they're not. Lesnar winning the WWE title in the Elimination Chamber only to go main event WrestleMania anyway is something that really voids out him winning the Royal Rumble. WWE could have easily did this the same way with anybody else But they've decided to hot shot the title back and forth between Lashley and Lesnar and give Lesnar the Royal Rumble when they could have given the Royal Rumble to somebody else to have this same outcome that we're possibly getting at WrestleMania this year with somebody wrestling night one and then wrestling again on night two. WWE seemingly has wasted this road to WrestleMania to build up the importance of Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns and they went about it in a way that didn't really give any importance to the Royal Rumble. That's what I find kind of disheartening. But this is WWE, and they have to sell 100,000 tickets times two for WrestleMania that's taking place in one of the largest stadiums in the United States, at AT AT&T Stadium. So we will see that, hopefully, take place. Ronda versus Charlotte is not a main event WrestleMania match to me. I'm sorry. And what we saw tonight, I mean, I don't want to see them in the ring, period. Never mind in the main event. The Women's Elimination Chamber was highly disappointing for more than one reason. The two-minute intervals did not help this show or these matches at all. Everything felt rushed. Nothing really felt important. Even the men's match, two-minute intervals. I get that they wanted to leave Saudi Arabia. Listen, I'm not complaining about them wanting to get out of Saudi Arabia. I could probably understand that. But the more you rush... With such an important aspect on the road to WrestleMania, the more you rush through this shit, the less it feels important. Nothing really felt important here. The Elimination Chamber matches did not feel important to me whatsoever. The two-minute intervals really hurt both the women's and men's matches. The women's match, and I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth when we get to the actual show. The women's match, they barely used the chamber. They did not use the Elimination Chamber at all. Maybe... You know, a couple spots here where they threw the women into the, into the steel barricade or the steel grates of the cage. But that was about it. A couple of bodies being slammed against the chain link fence. And then, oh my God, it's a great elimination chamber match. Some of these fucking unintelligent ghouls on social media coming out and blasting my opinion. The match was boring. There was nothing about the match that needed to be... In the elimination chamber, no pods were broken, nobody climbed the cage, nobody stood on top of the pods, nobody used the chamber as a weapon or to their advantage. Nothing. Yet I got people claiming this was a great elimination chamber match. This was on par with one of the worst elimination chamber matches of all time and the worst women's elimination chamber match since the one Shayna Baszler won, which was probably the worst of all time. This match was unnecessary. This was six women in a match. You could have did any type of match to grant the number one contendership to anybody. It didn't need to be in the elimination chamber. The chamber was nothing more than aesthetic. And that was it. Lita and Becky Lynch. The match itself was fine. Becky Lynch, she annoys the shit out of me for all the wrong reasons. I think her gimmick is just god-awful. But Lita was the star of this match tonight. 46 years old is Lita. Now, we saw her in the Royal Rumble for 10 to 15 minutes. You can't really gauge 
on how somebody's going to perform at that age, at this level with all the young talent in a Royal Rumble. It's not really a scientific match, the Royal Rumble. Punches, kicks, a couple of body slams, hold on to the rope and try not to get eliminated. But Lita was in a full-fledged 15-minute match tonight with Becky Lynch, and I thought she stood her ground and she looked very good in there with Becky Lynch. I honestly would say, if you were to ask me, J.D., do you want to see Lita back in a semi-capacity in the women's division? I would absolutely, I would absolutely uh, say yes to that. I think Lita still has a lot left in the tank to give if her performance tonight is anything to really base it off of. And I think she could be, if WWE was to book her correctly, complement the division and not book a division around her. I think she did great tonight. She looked great. And the way that they had her kind of do the send-off at the end of the match, it may indicate that she's going away and she was only brought back for this one match. But I thought she stood her ground tonight. I thought she did very well in a match against Becky. Becky, to me, I don't really find any interest in this Becky character. I think she's fucking cringe. I don't think Becky Lynch has made the division better. I actually think Becky's killed the division for many reasons. Not because she is a terrible gimmick, but the fact that WWE is parading Becky Lynch around as a heel and people want to cheer her, but WWE is continuing to push heel Becky Lynch and then there's this indifference from the crowd as far as reaction goes. And then it makes Becky Lynch and her character seem very, very insignificant and unimportant. Because the crowd doesn't know what to do. And that's where WWE fucked up with Becky Lynch. So we'll see what happens. Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch is the match scheduled to take place at WrestleMania. I don't see the great importance of this match. I don't see how this benefits Bianca Belair at all. I don't see how this benefits the women's division. Yes, Bianca's going to get revenge for her 26-second loss at SummerSlam. Great. But the division is probably worse now than it was then when Becky did that to Bianca. And I don't really see how Bianca and Becky is going to be a bigger match for Bianca than what she had with Sasha Banks last year when they main-evented WrestleMania in what was, according to most, one of the most important matches in women's WWE history. I don't get it. Somebody please tell me what exactly I'm missing here as far as the importance goes for Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair at WrestleMania. I don't get it. I don't get it. And then we got Goldberg versus Roman Reigns. Goldberg hopefully is on his way to an old age home never to be seen again. I thought the twists and turns were going to actually come out of this match. But I'm glad WWE did the right thing here. The conclusion was perfect. It lasted five minutes, and that was it. Goldberg, goodbye. Hopefully this was his last WWE match on his current WWE deal. So we'll talk about all that. Plus, there's a big rumor regarding The Miz. Apparently he said something along the lines of Mysterio, Ray and Dominic Mysterio. Teaming up together against him and a mystery partner at WrestleMania. It is not who you are thinking it is. It is not the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. It is not. I have news on who that partner is going to be. And we're going to talk about everything Elimination Chamber right here on Off the Script. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on this Saturday afternoon. We got 2,800 people in the venue and we are from my calculations from my calculations we are number one right now as far as live streams are concerned in the community i see others are live and we are blowing them away numbers wise man thank you guys so very much for choosing me as your number one destination right here on your saturday afternoon hopefully your beverages are cold mine is and we're going to talk some WWE. First, follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for all the new followers today on Twitter, man. Thank you for tweeting along with me. Some, some had to go to the bench because they don't grasp that wrestling is a subjective topic. I did not come at anybody confrontational like I uh, have been in the past, but it's seemingly 
just very uneasy for me that people can really grasp that what I say on social media is merely my opinion. And it's okay, man. You're not gonna you're not gonna lose sleep. The sun is gonna rise tomorrow just like it does every fucking day. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But thank you to everybody that followed on Twitter at JD from NY206 on Twitter and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for all notifications. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. We got 829 likes right now on the live stream. We need 1,000 at least minimum on the thumbs up. There's 2,700 people in here, man. You guys are being just as lazy as WWE creative with that thumbs up button. So if you guys have not hit the thumbs up, make sure you go and hit that thumbs up right now for me. Super chats are open. Get them on in. We'll hang out at the end of the show and go over them all as usual. Make sure those memberships are still coming in. Hit that join button. Become a VIP right here on Off The Script. You guys get those emotes. Custom emotes made for the channel and those OTS badges to show off your VIP status right here in the OTS venue. Make sure you guys go and do that. I've been hard at work all week, man. I can't wait for the stream to be over so I can relax with a legitimate alcoholic beverage. I've been going hard all year so far, man. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, nonstop, and now Saturday, where this is normally my new day off. You guys got Elimination Chamber today, but if you guys missed any of the content on the channel, it is on the homepage right now, as well as Blue Wire Podcasts, my new home for off the scripts on the audio side of things, Spotify, iTunes, and all major audio platforms. Thank you guys very much for all that. Go and check out everything you might have missed on the channel this week. Today's show is sponsored by my great friends over at Audible. You guys want something for free? Make sure you guys sign up to Audible using our unique link. That is audibletrial.com slash scripts. 30 days free of their service and one free audiobook of your choice. You guys can cancel it anytime. And the best part is you get to keep that audiobook for free no matter what. And shout out to my boy Salrex. He's got some graphics work he wants to do for you. Make sure you guys go visit Salrex on Twitter. And Instagram, you see his ads right there. Make sure you hit him up. He's been doing graphics work for me pretty much since I started. His prices are fair. His work never disappoints. He's looking forward to hearing from you guys. He does graphic services such as logo design, YouTube revamps, album covers, mixtape covers, t-shirt designs, and more. Hit him up. You guys are not going to be disappointed with the work that he provides. So make sure you follow him on Twitter and Instagram as you see his ads right there at the bottom of this graphic. Thank you guys very much for supporting me and everybody that supports Off The Scripts. Let's start at the top, man. Elimination Chamber starts off with Rey Mysterio. And The Miz, this was a pre-show match. This was not as bad as I expected it to be. And it was fine by WWE standards goes. Nothing really blow away, nothing really special. So we got Miz, he's jumping Mysterio right at the bell, trying to take advantage here. Mysterio made a comeback, went for a 619. Miz bailed to the outside. Slow playing it. Mysterio then hit a sliding dive to the outside, splashing Miz like he usually does. He does that spot where he slides underneath the bottom rope and does the big splash. Mysterio went to jump off the turnbuckle, but Miz crotched him to regain control of the match for a little bit. Miz confronted Dominic at ringside. He was trying to bully Dominic. And Mysterio started to make a comeback here. He sent the Miz into the ring post. Mysterio connected with a seated senton. Cross body off the top. Mysterio went for a sunset flip, but uh, Miz cut Mysterio off and hit a DDT. Mysterio blocked a skull crushing finale and connected with a 619. He went for the splash, but Miz rolled to the outside once again. Miz took a chair and he tried to enter the ring, but Mysterio hit a splash to the outside off the top rope. Dominic tried to intervene here. 
and take the chair away from The Miz. And then The Miz once again taking advantage of Dominic and his inexperience. When Dominic tried to take the chair away from The Miz, The Miz propelled himself into the steel steps and pretended like he'd been hit by the steel chair by Dominic. Dominic argue, argued with the referee. He was thrown out eventually. Miz took advantage of this situation by trying to lay out Mysterio with a skull-crushing finale because Ray was upset that Dominic, knowing that he didn't do anything, was being treated unfairly by the referee. Mysterio countered with a victory roll out of the attempted skull-crushing finale, and that was it. Ray Mysterio gets the win over The Miz. After the match, The Miz attacked Dominic. Mysterio proceeded to lay out Miz, hitting a double 619 with Dominic. And they both laid out Miz with a frog splash. So we got this Mysterio and Dominic feud, the Mysterios feuding with The Miz. This would have been perfect if John Morrison was still in the WWE and built up as The Miz's legitimate tag team partner. And a lot of people are now speculating because Miz was in the show with a backstage promo saying that he's got a mystery partner that he's going to hire and tag up with going into WrestleMania against Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. Now, the first thought in people's minds were, oh my goodness, Miz is going to get Cody Rhodes to tag up with him at WrestleMania. That would have been fucking terrible. Can you imagine Cody Rhodes leaving AEW in a semi-main event spot to go to WrestleMania and team with somebody who's probably been labeled as the biggest embarrassment in WWE on television. The Miz is mid. Can you imagine Cody Rhodes leaving AEW to go team with the fucking Miz? Holy shit, would that have been fucking terrible. But it's not Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes, I hope to God not, is being brought in to team with the fucking Miz. They're not going to pay him all that supposed money to team with the Miz against Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. The Miz lost to Rey, and in a backstage interview, he said he would bring in a global superstar to be his partner against Rey and Dominic Mysterio. I, I, I don't know if you consider Cody Rhodes a global superstar. PW Insider reports that Logan Paul is believed to be the person who will team up with The Miz, and the match will likely happen at WrestleMania. Logan Paul made appearances in the past for WWE in segments with Sami Zayn. Uh, he also took a stunner from Kevin Owens at last year's WrestleMania. So we see the card starting to take shape for WrestleMania, and we'll have more on WrestleMania's card as the weeks go on, as we are six weeks away from WrestleMania in Dallas, Texas. So it's not Cody Rhodes. So I think people can put that to bed. And I heard that Logan Paul uh, days ago, this was via Ringside News, they reported that Logan Paul was probably going to be another major celebrity surprise outside of Johnny Knoxville that will appear at WrestleMania. So that is that. So if you guys are wondering what the bathroom break match of the night will be, there you go. But maybe... I'm not sure what Logan Paul can bring to the table. We all probably said the same thing about Bad Bunny, and Bad Bunny probably had the best match with Damian Priest last year at WrestleMania against Miz and Morrison. So maybe we shouldn't completely write off Logan Paul at WrestleMania. Maybe he does something to surprise us. I don't know. It's the only time we'll tell on that, but it's not Cody Rhodes, and it's not going to be a situation where Cody is immediately coming in and being delegated to the lower end of the WWE card. We don't even know if Cody Rhodes is signed yet. We don't know if he's signing. He hasn't signed anything from what I read last night. So he could still be with AEW at the end of all this. We don't know. We don't know if it's a work. We don't know if it's legit. We don't know where Cody Rhodes is. We don't know anything about this. So it's, it's, it's going to be a wait and see situation and only time will tell. The actual Elimination Chamber show started off with Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg. Roman Reigns said many, many, many months ago, if I'm not closing the show, I'm opening the show. 
Roman Reigns always gets what Roman Reigns wants. Roman Reigns is not going to be placed in the middle of the show because he's far too important to be that middle-of-the-road guy. You either start off the show or you end the show, and that's Roman Reigns' prerogative. What I don't understand, and this is WWE just being WWE, and it's one of the little things that bothers me. I, I, even, I even get bothered by it when AEW does it. I don't know. I, I can't remember the last time they've done it, but AEW cares for their championships and their champions. Not saying that WWE doesn't care for Roman Reigns, but when a champion comes out first, there's something that kind of goes off in my head. That old school mentality just goes off in my head. The champion should always come out last. Bill Goldberg came out last because he's Bill Goldberg. I don't give a shit who Bill Goldberg is or how many years he's had in this industry and how many wins he's had and how many people he's beaten. Bill Goldberg should not be coming out last in a championship match against the biggest superstar in the, in the business, in Roman Reigns. So things like that are what irk me. Those little minor details. Especially like when somebody comes out to interview a superstar and, and they get that interview and then someone interrupts that superstar, their theme music goes off. Like it's the next scene in an act. Give me a break. You don't need to come out and have your theme music go off and do all this, oh my God, big deal hoopla. Come out with the microphone and interrupt the promo. You don't need your theme music going off as if you're wrestling a match. Things like that. I I hate when shit like that happens. I don't like when champions come out second. Or come out first, rather. I, I need the champion to come out second. The match itself. Goldberg has no business on TV. We all know that. This is two years in the making. Everybody was hyping this up to be a dream match. I think that dream match feeling and that uh, those words really are overused and overhyped, just like the word buried is overhyped and overused. This is not a dream match. I don't know who ever would consider this a dream match. This may have been a dream match 20 years ago with the old Bill Goldberg, but not this Goldberg. This match was two years in the making. It was supposed to happen at WrestleMania 35. It did not. Roman Reigns backed out because of COVID. And Bill Goldberg had to drop the title to a then Braun Strowman. So here we are. Two years to the day. We got Bill Goldberg and Roman Reigns. Vince has wanted this match. Spear versus Spear. I said this is either going to be quick, painless, and fun. Or this is going to be an absolute fucking disaster. I'm glad to report to you guys that this was not a disaster, but it was largely unforgettable. Largely unforgettable. Very short. Five minutes. Maybe a little bit longer, but five minutes. I think anything longer than five minutes would have been complete overkill here. The two locked up. There was actually a collar and elbow tie-up in the middle of the ring. Rain sent Goldberg to the outside. He tried to send Goldberg into the barricade around the ringside area, but Goldberg countered and threw Reigns into the barricade instead. Very, I would say, not as overpowering to start the match. They started it off slow. They wanted to build to something, whether or not it was five minutes, and they built to something climactic at the end, whatever. They wanted to take a different approach instead of coming out, going zero to 60 in three seconds. They wanted to slow the pace down, so... You know, collar and elbow tie-up, barricade spots on the outside. So Reigns attacked Goldberg in the ring when Goldberg threw him back into the ring. Goldberg fired back with a quick spear. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. But they got to build intrigue with those spears coming out of nowhere. Reigns then cut off a jackhammer attempt and hit a urinagi. It looked like he was actually going to do a rock bottom, but it was a urinagi. It wasn't a rock bottom. Rock bottom is a... A take on the Uranagi, but it's not really the rock bottom, okay? So, he hit him with a Uranagi. Reigns connected with a Superman punch, and they're going to the finishes back and forth here. So, this is where the match started off slow, and then it went right to the finishes, because that's all Goldberg knows how to do. Reigns went for a spear, but Goldberg countered with his second spear. I'm like, oh my God, here we go. And then he was signaling for the jackhammer, But Reigns blocked the jackhammer, got out of it, and transitioned quickly from the jackhammer into the guillotine. Goldberg tried to fight out of it. 
using the corner. He had Reigns on his back, bumping him into the top turnbuckle. But Goldberg eventually succumbed to the guillotine Reigns and his weight all on top of Bill Goldberg in the middle of the ring. And Goldberg passed out. Five minutes, Roman Reigns chokes out Bill Goldberg and retains the Universal Championship in five minutes. The match is exactly what it needed to be. The match was the exact length that it needed to be. It was nothing overly special. And Roman Reigns goes into WrestleMania as the Universal Championship. Those twists and turns were averted here in this match. I don't know how this did good for anybody. Maybe Reigns a little bit. But Goldberg, I think we're all finally done with Bill Goldberg. This was a complete waste of time to everybody. Is Goldberg over? Yes, everybody's over in Saudi Arabia. They get two WWE shows per year. They're going to be the most casual of casual crowds. So yes, you got loud Goldberg chants. Yes, you got big Goldberg fucking praise in Saudi Arabia. But the thing is, Goldberg and him coming back to our audience is fucking finished. He does nothing and serves no purpose anymore. He's not a ratings draw. Nobody wants to see him. And it's quite laughable that he comes back after losing so many matches and constantly gets world championship opportunities. Let's put this to bed. Goodbye, Bill. I hope you never sign another deal again. I pray to God it doesn't result in another three-year deal. Let's get this guy into the old age home. I'm tired of Bill Goldberg. Nobody wants to see him on WWE TV ever again. What does this do for Roman Reigns? The only thing that it does for Roman Reigns is put that name, Bill Goldberg, on the list of victims during this Universal Championship run. And the list looks a lot better when you can put WWE Hall of Famer Bill Goldberg. But what did this really do? It did nothing to get me excited. Very predictable. And though it was the right outcome, it was the bad kind of predictable. This match meant nothing. And it will mean nothing come Friday on SmackDown when Roman Reigns is solely focused on Brock Lesnar. Bianca Belair. Joe Drop. Nikki T-R-A-S-H, Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan in a women's elimination chamber match. Rhea Ripley, I can't forget Rhea Ripley, she was also there. Six women in this elimination chamber match. Winner of this match is the number one contender for Becky Lynch and the Raw Women's Championship. The women's chamber match did not need to be a women's chamber match. It did not. I get why WWE has to do it. They got to create this equal environment. Whatever the men do, the women can do. This match lacked so much creativity to a point where it did nothing but harm the concept of the Elimination Chamber. And WWE has been harming the concept of the Elimination Chamber for years now. This match did not help the feeling that I already had about the Elimination Chamber. This match did not need the chamber. The chamber was barely used. It was there as merely an aesthetic. The chamber itself was not used to create, to give me any high spots, to be unique, to be different. And that's exactly what all of the women's division needs in WWE. And they did nothing. They even changed the rules. I'm asking myself, all right, we got two women starting the match, and then in five-minute intervals, the buzzer goes off, And then someone else joins the field of who already is in the ring. WWE cut down the five-minute intervals to two minutes. I don't know what the rush was for. I don't get why they rushed through it. The quicker you rush through it, the less important the match is going to be. It was over in 15 minutes. I mean, I could watch fucking 15 minutes on AEW Rampage with two nobodies. The Elimination Chamber match to serve as a number one contender for the Royal Women's Championship at WrestleMania should not be contested in 15 fucking minutes. WWE let everybody down with that one change of the rule. Two minutes. Why even bother? Why even bother? If you're not going to allow the women to go out there and give me something that lives up to the Chamber name, Why even bother putting them in there? I hear praise about this. Oh, this was great. Oh, I love this. Oh, I love that. What about it? It was great. What about it? 
Bianca Belair won it? You knew she was going to win it. So Bianca Belair makes it a great match because she won the match. The match sucked. It should not have been contested inside the Elimination Chamber. Second thing. Second thing. Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss is done with therapy, apparently. She's done with therapy. I thought Alexa Bliss was going to shed the playhouse, the fun house gimmick. Thought she was going to get new theme music. But apparently, WWE sent Alexa Bliss out there. She went to her pod and she had a fucking child's swing set in her fucking pod. She came out wearing the same exact outfit that she had when she was on the Alexa's playground, and she came out to the same theme music. So what did we sit through weeks of therapy for? She came out as the same Alexa Bliss that she was before she went away. So what was the point of the therapy sessions? That itself was fucking disappointing. I don't understand why WWE just didn't change her and revert her back to the old gimmick. She's still utilizing some of what Bray Wyatt brought to the table around the Alexa Bliss character. And this, the lack of change that I've seen in Alexa Bliss, I didn't give a shit about Alexa Bliss to begin with. I think Alexa Bliss sucks. I don't think she adds any value to the women's division. But the fact that we saw Alexa Bliss and nothing about Alexa Bliss has changed from the last time we saw her in September of 2021 makes me somehow care about Alexa Bliss less than I do, than I already do. What a joke. What a joke. Maybe WWE at some point changes her back, but the first visual that we see as soon as she finished therapy in her first match is the same Bliss that we saw Back in September, does nobody any favors. It doesn't do Bliss any favors, and it just pisses the fan base off that wanted something else and something different. Lack of WWE creative, creatively bankrupt is WWE. Guarantee you, Lily the Doll is going to be integrated into her act, still moving forward. This was very quick, and there was no importance to it whatsoever. None. The fact that it went 15 minutes ruined all of the importance for what this match was serving, and that is to become the number one contender for the Raw Women's title. Everyone here was mostly covered as, you know, they're wrestling in Saudi Arabia. There was uh, no exposing of the skin or any uh, tits or ass here. So it's... Something that normally WWE sent the women out there to do, you know, wearing like blue or red t-shirts or t-shirts with their name or logo on it. WWE's logo, that is. All the women in this match, I kind of like what they did here. All of the appropriate outfits that the ladies had to wear, they were all molded to fit their personality. Liv Morgan came out dressed like Britney Spears. We had Doe Drop come out wearing that... uh, Those flannel patches on her shirt that said Doe Drop across her chest. Rhea Ripley didn't look drastically different from what she usually wears. She was dressed in all leather. She looked like a dominatrix out there. Bianca Belair didn't look vastly different from what she usually wears. Nikki Ash, she came out dressed as the same thing. She usually is very covered, but this time she had sleeves on. It didn't make a big difference in their appearance. Alexa Bliss, she was covered from head to toe in what she usually wears, like you guys remember on the Funhouse. So... They took their personalities and their gimmick and they applied them to their outfits, which was a nice touch in this match. Morgan and Nikki started things off. Nikki TR, A-S-H, started things off. Nikki slammed Morgan into the padding on the outside. Uh, Morgan fired back and threw Nikki into a near, nearby pod there, which didn't really amount to anything. Nikki then threw Morgan into the chain link fence. Ah. And then Dodrop entered number three and acted like she wanted a team with Nikki, but instead laid her out and splashed her into the chain link fence, then did some to Morgan as well, taking her out with a running senton. So we got Dodrop 
hitting the ring post when she tried to charge at Nikki, leaving Nikki all by herself. Rhea Ripley came out number four. Rhea Ripley went right after Nikki. Doe Drop tried to attack Rhea Ripley, but Ricky later, uh, Ripley laid her out. And both Ripley and Nikki tried climbing the cage. Nikki tried to get away from Rhea Ripley here. Ripley slammed Nikki's head into the fence. Nikki fell, sending her crashing into Morgan and Doe Drop. Ripley took her back into the ring and pinned Nikki with a riptide. So Nikki TR, A-S-H, is eliminated. Alexa Bliss came out number five. Morgan took her out. Doe Drop pushed her off the post and into the pod. Doe Drop took out Rhea Ripley, but Morgan fired back with a sunset flip off the second turnbuckle, and she pinned Doe Drop. So Nikki TR, A-S-H, and Doe Drop are now eliminated. Four women remain. Bella entered the ring and the chamber last, and Ripley took out Bliss and Morgan They hit stereo suplexes on both. They went back and forth until Morgan hit a double co-breaker. Bliss took out Morgan with a twisted Bliss off the top rope. And Liv Morgan was eliminated by Alexa Bliss. So now we're down to three. It's Belair, Ripley, and Bliss. Ripley went with the riptide on Belair. But Bliss got involved and broke that up. Belair hit the KOD on Ripley to eliminate her. So Rhea Ripley is eliminated. We're now down to Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss. I wonder what Rhea Ripley is going to be doing going into WrestleMania. That's a big question mark for me. And it really will gauge how important WWE sees Rhea Ripley on the road to WrestleMania. I don't think she really does much of anything. You know, Asuka could come back. You could get another women's match on the show with Asuka. I would like to see Bailey come back and maybe do something with Rhea Ripley on Monday Night Raw. I would I would put Bailey on Monday Night Raw, have her feud with Rhea Ripley, and build Rhea Ripley and Bailey up as a really competitive match. And I would then feud Bailey against Becky Lynch on Monday Night Raw. I, I think that's the way to go about it. I really would. I, I, I don't know where else you would put Bailey. You could put her back on SmackDown, but what is she gonna do on SmackDown? What, are you going to team her back with Sasha Banks again? I hear rumors that people want Sasha Banks and Bayley back together as a tag team. WWE has no tag teams in the women's division. I don't even know why we have women's tag team championships at this point. I don't want to see Bayley and Sasha Banks teaming together. But WWE may actually go that route because neither woman, Bayley's ready to return and Sasha is not factored into anything. Neither women have anything to do at WrestleMania. Just imagine that. Sasha Banks has nothing to do at WrestleMania. It's fucking weird to me, man. It really is. She's not hurt. What are you going to do with her? Ripley's got nothing to do. bailey has got nothing to do. Asuka's got nothing to do. Sasha's got nothing to do. Liv Morgan has been decent. Rhea Ripley's got nothing to do. Look at these women who got nothing to do at WrestleMania. So now we're down to Belair and Alexa Bliss. So after the, the KOD on Ripley to eliminate her, the two went back and forth near the chain link fence. Belair powerbombed Bliss into the fence twice. Looked a little weak. Belair missed a 450 splash. Bliss went for a DDT. Belair managed to avoid it. So we got some near falls going back and forth here. Bliss told Belair to give up. Give it up. Belair responded, no, hit the KOD on Alexa Bliss, pinned Alexa Bliss, and she's going to WrestleMania to challenge Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship. I get that people want to see Belair and Becky Lynch at WrestleMania just to tie up the loose ends that WWE created for Bianca Belair at SummerSlam in 2021. I don't, I don't understand why people are genuinely excited for this. I want you guys to come up with one instance to me, really. This is, your, this is your homework for the evening. I want people to come up with one instance, one explanation. Tell me what I'm not seeing. I want you to tell me how Bianca Belair is more over now and better now 
going into this match with Becky compared to what she did with Sasha at WrestleMania. She doesn't feel any different. She doesn't feel any different. WWE took Bianca, beating Sasha at WrestleMania, gave her a very mid Raw Women's Championship run, lost the belt to Becky Lynch in 26 seconds, never really recovered from that, and Bianca Belair hasn't been treated as a major superstar since that loss to Becky Lynch. She's been treated as an afterthought. She's been treated as somebody that's not on the same level of Becky Lynch. So please tell me how Becky Lynch and and Bianca Belair is going to be a more important match than what Bianca Belair did with Sasha Banks at WrestleMania last year. Two women of color in the main event of WrestleMania. The main event of WrestleMania. And now you're comparing that to what Bianca Belair is doing now against Becky Lynch? I, I don't understand it. Nothing. There is no answer to that question. The chat sees it. The chat knows it. Everybody knows it. Tell me what I'm missing. How is Bianca Belair better and moreover now? What has she done now since SummerSlam that is going to make this match more important than Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair at WrestleMania? The only thing that this does for me, WWE realizes, but they'll never admit it, that they fucked up. Becky Lynch didn't need the Raw Women's Championship. She didn't. WWE shouldn't, if they wanted Becky Lynch to be the Raw Women's Champion, it shouldn't have been done in 26 seconds. They could have went out there at SummerSlam and tore the house down with a 20-minute great match. WWE didn't want to go that route. All this does is prove to me that WWE knows they fucked up with the 26 seconds, they'll never admit it, and now they want to correct that mistake, and they want to take that that moment and that match out of your mind and replace it with something a little bit better. They want to redo at WrestleMania. And let me tell you, whether Bianca goes into this match, she feels the same exact thing that she did when she was the Raw Women's Champion in her first run. If Bianca Belair wins the Raw Women's Championship from Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, how does it make the division better? It doesn't. Bianca's not going to be any more over than she is now even by beating Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is at the lowest point in her career. Her gimmick sucks. Nobody gives a shit about her. She is as irrelevant as they come. The gimmick itself has created such indifference with the fan base that her importance has taken a fucking nosedive. Becky Lynch's importance is in the mud. She's not presented as a big deal. WWE presents her as a big deal. But it's all pretend. It's all smoke and mirrors. She thinks she's this world-renowned superstar. She thinks she's this big name on Monday Night Raw. Let me tell you something. Nobody's watching Monday Night Raw for Becky Lynch. So how good of a superstar, how big of a superstar is Becky Lynch? This match at WrestleMania is going to be on the undercard. Because that's exactly where Bianca Belair has been slotted on the WWE ladder. Becky Lynch is just there because she's Becky Lynch. But this match is not going to have any more importance than what Bianca and Sasha did at last year's WrestleMania. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. Becky Lynch needs to go back after this match at WrestleMania, hit the reset button, and come back and give us that Becky Lynch that we legitimately fucking cared about. Every time she opens her mouth, every time she speaks, every time I hear that theme music, every time I look at her, the way she dresses, it doesn't resonate. It doesn't. It actually sends off signals of, I need to mute the TV. I need to change the channel. I need to walk away and go do something else because I don't give a shit what Becky Lynch is doing or who she's feuding with. The division is actually worse with her back. If Becky Lynch was such a game changer, then the division would be better. The Monday Night Raw women's division, along with the SmackDown women's division, are two of the worst women's divisions in all of pro wrestling. It revolves around Becky Lynch and nobody else. The SmackDown side revolves around Charlotte Flair and nobody else. Now they got Ronda Rousey over there, who's not even a WWE superstar. She's just Ronda Rousey, world-renowned athlete Ronda Rousey. She isn't a WWE, you know, she's not a part of the women's revolution. 
WWE is using an outside source to build their fucking dying women's division, and it's still not working. Becky Lynch is leading a dead division. She hasn't made the division better. She hasn't put anybody over. Nobody looks better because Becky Lynch is in the ring with them. She does nothing. She's done nothing. So please tell me, what am I missing? I'm missing jack shit. Bianca Belair gets the title match. Give me a fucking pillow. I could not give a shit about Bianca Belair winning the Raw Women's Championship because I know exactly what's going to happen after that. WWE is going to make her champion and nothing will amount from it. Speaking of the women's division, Ronda Rousey and Naomi against Sonya Deville and Charlotte. If this match is any indication about what we can expect from Ronda and Charlotte, you better pray that this is not the main event of WrestleMania. I don't know what they're going to do for six weeks to build this fucking feud, but Jesus fucking Christ, did this match suck. Oh my goodness. Naomi was easily the star of this match, as she has been on WWE television. The whole thing with this is Ronda put her hands on Sonya Deville. Friday on SmackDown, last night on SmackDown, Sonya Deville had Ronda sign a contract where she was to wrestle this match with one one arm tied behind her back. The thing is, Ronda's arm was never tied behind her back, ever. Ronda Rousey and the visual of Ronda Rousey, and you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about if you watch the show. Ronda Rousey had this rope around her waist and her arm was supposedly supposed to be tied behind her back. Her arm laid at the side, if not here. So she could still have use of her arm. You can't have use of your arm if your fucking arm is tied behind your back. Her arm was here. So meaning her arm was still in front of her body. The visual of Ronda Rousey having her arm not tied behind her back was fucking pathetic. It made the entire segment last night and the entire stipulation absolutely pointless. And we only knew this match existed for two reasons. Number one, WWE is influencing the world. They got to get that fucking tagline, that corporate tagline out there. We had three women's matches in Saudi Arabia, influencing the world. You ain't inf- influencing jack shit. Give me a break. Number two, this match only served for Elimination Chamber to highlight Charlotte and Ronda and give Sonya Deville a loss. Ronda wasn't losing. Ronda being in a team with Naomi, they weren't going to lose. Sonya was always the odd woman out. If Charlotte and Ronda gave you any indication about what their match is going to look like at WrestleMania, this shit is in no way, shape, or form ready for a main event spot. Can you imagine if Ronda and Charlotte main event WrestleMania and we got what we got tonight? Sloppiness. Jesus fucking Christ. Now you really know why WWE may go with Lesnar and Lashley in night one for WrestleMania. Just kind of just placed in the middle of the show with no importance whatsoever. This match was. Rousey came out wearing this karate-like outfit. And Michael Cole on commentary said it was the same outfit she wore when she won the bronze medal in judo in the 2008 Olympics. DeVille immediately revealed that her arm, clearly, is okay. She was wearing a sling on her arm as a troll, and she took the sling off now that Ronda Rousey has her hand or arm tied behind her back. So Naomi was tagged in, but uh, DeVille cut her off by pushing her into the turnbuckle as Naomi attempted a bulldog. Naomi countered and tagged in Rousey, who quickly took down DeVille. Charlotte interfered and drove Rousey into the turnbuckle, giving her team the slight advantage up until this point. Both DeVille and Charlotte kept Rousey in their portion of the ring. Rousey tried to fight out, but Charlotte remained in control here. Rousey finally freed herself, made the hot tag to Naomi, who took Charlotte to the outside, hit a corkscrew plancha to the outside. Naomi took Charlotte back into the ring, but Charlotte cut off Naomi with a powerbomb, sit-out powerbomb. Charlotte put the figure eight 
on Naomi, but Ronda Rousey broke it up. Ronda tagged back in, took DeVille out with Piper's pit, her Samoan drop, then launched uh, or latched on an armbar here. Charlotte doesn't bother helping DeVille as she quickly submitted to Ronda Rousey. She just looked. Charlotte just stood on the apron and looked. I'm not getting involved. Sonia doesn't mean anything to me. Give Ronda this one. I'll get her at WrestleMania. I'll tell you what, man. You know, I've been very impressed with the job Naomi has done. Very impressed. I don't get a sense. Listen, I may be a minority in this. I, I may I may get, a, uh, you know, some backlash on this, some flack from you guys. Apparently, Ronda has her fans. Ronda also has her, de- her detractors. Charlotte Flair is fucking overrated as fuck. I don't look at it as a WrestleMania main event. I don't. All I look at it as, or all I see is two greedy bitches in the WrestleMania quote-unquote main event. That's all I see. We all know why Charlotte Flair is there. We all know why Charlotte Flair lobbied for Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. We all know why. Ronda Rousey is not at the level of an in-ring competitor to be in the main event of WrestleMania. The match with Becky and Charlotte at WrestleMania in New York was fucking garbage. It was shit. All of a sudden, now we get Ronda Rousey and Charlotte at WrestleMania again in a one-on-one match, and you think I'm going to get excited? Why would I get excited after seeing Naomi have the best match of her life with Charlotte Flair, someone who's underutilized, someone who could have easily won the Royal Rumble, somebody that would have been over if she won the Royal Rumble, somebody that would have been made if she won the Royal Rumble. The little that I saw of Charlotte and Naomi in this match, on top of that great match that they just had a couple of weeks back, and after the last match that they had, they even had a match before that match. They wrestled twice. Once in a non-title situation and then one for the title. Naomi and Charlotte would get a bigger reaction than Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. Could you imagine if Naomi won the Royal Rumble and was on this chase for the Women's Championship, ultimately beating Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania? You mean to tell me that that wouldn't be a great WrestleMania moment? And who, who is going to choose or prefer Ronda Rousey over that? Like, why do we automatically have to put Ronda Rousey in the main event for for the world championship. It's so fucking stupid. Ronda Rousey should be brought in to complement the rest of the women, not take spots that should go to somebody else, not take championship opportunities away from somebody else. It doesn't make sense to me. This match was fucking garbage, completely unnecessary. The rule of Ronda having her arm tied behind her back looked pathetic when her hand is dangling in front of her the entire fucking match. Naomi took that rope off. Ronda couldn't wait to get that fucking rope off because she probably even knew in the moment that it was fucking ridiculous. Charlotte and Ronda, boring. I hope to God Lashley and Lesnar main event night one. Drew McIntyre and Riddick Moss, Madcap Moss. I'll tell you what, man. You know, Riddick Moss in NXT, he had something. I seen something in Riddick Moss. I I see a lot in Riddick Moss. I I just don't get why, you know, we're getting this happy Corbin and Madcap Moss pairing on, on Friday night. I think it's fucking terrible. I really do. You know, Madcap Moss, underneath the gimmick and underneath the fucking goofy attire and the goddamn corny jokes that most weeks are not funny, underneath the gimmick is a damn good fucking professional wrestler. And I, and I honestly mean that. I don't want to shit on the guy, but this is WWE's choice, not Madcap Moss's choice. He's only been given something by WWE creative, by Bruce, by Vince, and he's got to make it work. He's got absolutely no say in anything that's happens with his gimmick on TV. He got fucking destroyed tonight. This match was painful to watch. It wasn't bad in a painful way. It wasn't painful in a bad way, I should say. It was painful because Madcap took a fucking beating. They lived up to the no DQ match, and they went above and beyond that, man. It was short. It was fine. Good. Nothing blow away, 
But my goodness, man, did they make an example out of Mad Cat Moss. This was pretty much a way to get McIntyre back in the win column, get his revenge. I hope we do not get McIntyre versus Corbin at WrestleMania. That would be absolutely beneath Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Can you imagine he got Jinder Mahal at WrestleMania? Or when did he get Jinder? At SummerSlam or WrestleMania? I don't even remember. I think it was at SummerSlam, right? What did he do at WrestleMania? He did Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. He got Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam. And now he's going to get Happy Corbin at WrestleMania? I don't think that's treating Drew McIntyre good at all, man. I mean, give me a break. That's awful. But this was designed to get McIntyre a big revenge victory and then him chasing down Happy Corbin. Corbin immediately jumped McIntyre at the bell. McIntyre chased Corbin out of the ringside area, or away from the ringside area, cut off Moss, tried to jump him from behind. Corbin came back with uh, a double suplex. Both of them did a double suplex with uh, both of them teaming up on McIntyre. Moss hit a fallaway slam on the ramp. McIntyre cut off Moss in the ring. And this is the spot that really changed the complexion of this match, man. It was legitimately fucking scary. The replay made it that much worse in slow motion. Drew McIntyre did an Alabama slam. Now, an Alabama slam is when, you know, you got the guy hanging backwards over your back and you kind of slingshot him back first to the mat. This guy's fucking neck hit the mat in such a way that it looked like he might have fucking broken his neck. You guys seen it if you're on Twitter. You seen the still image of his neck just twisted and contorted off this Alabama slam. This guy, Mad Cat Moss, not only one tough son of a bitch, but Jesus fucking Christ, man. I am shocked that this guy was able to walk out on his own accord and leave the ring after the match was over. Seriously. I am shocked that he's not fucking paralyzed. You gotta go back. If you do anything on this show, go back and watch the replay of that Alabama slam in this match by McIntyre done to Mad Cat Moss. Unfucking believable, man. Ridiculous. So McIntyre cut off Moss in the ring, hit the Alabama slam. He landed right on his neck, his head. It looked fucking awful. He somehow got up. He continued the match. McIntyre threw him into the announce table with a fallaway slam. After that, Corbin came back with a chair. No DQ. Everything's legal here. Both Corbin and Moss threw McIntyre into the barricade. McIntyre cut off Moss and connected with a big superplex. McIntyre hit the future shock DDT. Corbin got back in the ring to interfere again. McIntyre took his sword, Angela, and that scared off Corbin. Corbin's like, you got to do something, ref. You got to do something. Referee Jessica Carr officiating this match. I can't do nothing. It's no DQ. He could use the sword if he wants. So he scared off Corbin with the sword. He was carrying the sword in one hand. He did the 3-2-1 countdown for the Claymore. And he Claymored Matt Catmoss with the sword in hand. 1-2-3. Puts his boot right on Matt Cap's chest. And that was it. So we got Drew McIntyre cutting down one half of the duo of Moss and Corbin. And now sets his eyes on Happy Corbin, which I am presuming will be something that continues over the next six weeks going into WrestleMania. And I do think that Drew McIntyre should be booked in a better fashion going into WrestleMania and not against Happy fucking Corbin. McIntyre, man, I'll tell you, if this is the road for McIntyre, he is certainly somebody that is a company guy that does what he is asked to do. And good on him, man. Because I would not be happy with that position on the card. Yeah, it's a, it's a WrestleMania match. You're on the card. Some people don't even get to say that. Yeah, it's a payday. But knowing how McIntyre carried this fucking company on his back during the pandemic and he's belittled with two matches at two of the biggest shows that WWE have done since returning to live audiences with Jinder Mahal at SummerSlam and Mad Cat Moss and Happy Corbin going into WrestleMania, I feel bad for the fucking guy. I feel bad for him. Now, WWE reportedly has a major surprise on the level of Stone Cold Steve Austin coming to WrestleMania. I said, what if that surprise is John Cena coming back out of nowhere? I'd love to see John Cena versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. That would be a great WrestleMania match. But I don't think it's going to be John Cena. I I do think we're getting Madcap and Happy Corbin again going into WrestleMania. 
And I do think that big surprise is going to be The Rock showing up at the end of WrestleMania to confront Roman Reigns when he wins both WWE and Universal Championships. So we'll see what happens, man. I, I think Drew McIntyre deserves better. I know you guys feel the same way, same way about him. Yeah, he's been a little boring. Yeah, a little stale. But they got to give him something sub- sub- substantial to do. He's too good to be in a feud with both of these geeks going into WrestleMania. Becky Lynch and Lita. This was for the Raw Women's Championship. This match was actually pretty decent. After all I said about Becky Lynch, I'm going to lay off the Becky Lynch hate for the rest of the live stream. Lita, 46 years old. This was a one-off match that was born coming out of the Royal Rumble. WWE needed to get Becky Lynch into WrestleMania as champion. They needed to give her a big win going into WrestleMania and her match with Bianca Belair to defend that title at WrestleMania. Lita is 46 years old, man. Was she perfect? No. But did she look good? Absolutely. I was always a fan of Lita. I'm not a fan of legends coming back and overstaying their welcome. I'm not a fan of legends coming back and winning major championships. I'm not. But Lita, at 46 years old, if she wanted to come back, seeing the state of the women's division right now that needs all the help it can get, and Lita wants to stay through SummerSlam and have matches with Bayley, which have been teased on Twitter, matches with Sasha, maybe we get Trish and Lita coming back against Bayley and Sasha at WrestleMania, maybe. I would be okay with that. It's not them taking a spotlight away from somebody else. It's not taking a moment away from anybody else. They're merely used to complement others. They're not overtaking title opportunities or title spots or the divisions not being built around them. I would be okay with Lita coming in because the division right now has nobody outside of Charlotte and Becky and Ronda. Naomi's been given some shine, but she hasn't really done much of anything else. In WWE's eyes. She's she's a good hand. Naomi is a good hand. And if you do good. And you're a good hand. That doesn't necessarily mean that WWE. Is going to reward you. You know. Lita looked good today. She looked good. She didn't miss a beat. She looked like she belonged. Becky Lynch brought out a very good match. In Lita. Back and forth early here. Lita teased the twist of fate. But Lynch cut her off. And started to go blow to blow with her. Lynch hit a leg drop off the second turnbuckle. Plot a sleeper. Lita fought out of it. Hit a monkey flip. Lynch took Lita to the apron. Leg drop Lita again for the near fall. Lynch hit an exploder. Went for a second one. Lita dropped Lynch with a DDT right on her face. Lita and Lynch straight punches as Lita connected with a crossbody off the middle rope. They went back and forth with near falls. There was this weird spot in the match where Lynch got up and then suddenly kind of tripped herself in the match. She, she got up, tripped herself out of this pinfall, and was in a seated position. It almost looked like she slipped on a banana peel. And then Lita applied a sleeper hold. Lynch went to the top rope after this hold. Lita took her out with some head scissors. And she hit a twist of fate. She went for a cover, got her near fall. Lita went for the moonsault. But Lynch cut her off and hit the disarmor. Then hit the manhandle slam. Lita was pinned. One, two, and she put her boots, her foot, on the rope. Lynch repeatedly slammed Lita's face into the mat in frustration. She went for the moonsault. But Lita missed. Lita hit the twist of fate again. She went back up to attempt the moonsault again. She connected with the moonsault. She got the cover. One, two, and Lita did not get the victory. It was a very close near fall off the moonsault. Lita went to grab Lynch, and all of a sudden, Becky Lynch gets up after the moonsault spot, hits a manhandle slam. One, two, three, very out of nowhere, anticlimactic ending And Becky Lynch retains the Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch, by all accounts, no-sold. Lita's moonsault that she hit perfectly. And that was it. After the moonsault, kicked out, went right for the manhandle slam. And that's it. 
One, two, three. Becky Lynch retains the championship. Predictable? Yes. Was it a good predictable? No. It wasn't. Everybody expected Becky Lynch to retain the title. Everybody knew this was a one-off. Everybody expected Becky Lynch to go into WrestleMania and wrestle Bianca Belair. Could WWE have done something different as far as twists and turns? Maybe. Maybe. But I didn't think that they were going to take a chance on Becky Lynch losing that championship. They built too much in Becky Lynch and have this ridiculous storyline where she's parading around as if she, she's Raw Women's Champion for the last two and a half years. Give me a break. Very predictable. Good match for Lita. I don't give a shit at all about Becky Lynch, but this was a very good match. At the end of the night, I would probably say when all is said and done, this may have been the best match in ring of the entire night. Of the entire night. We were supposed to get a tag team championship match between the Usos and the Viking Raiders. So the Viking Raiders made their way out for this tag team title opportunity. They made their way down to the ring. They were doing their uh, Viking march where they pound their chest in a very cartoonish fashion. The Usos jumped the Viking Raiders as they made their way down to the ringside area right before the match. They suplexed Ivar onto Eric And it was a very tame, very mild beatdown of the Viking Raiders. It did not come across as something that would take the Viking Raiders out of a match. But the match ultimately did not take place because the Usos beat up the Viking Raiders before the match even got started. How ridiculous does WWE look? How ridiculous do the Viking Raiders look? They're fucking Vikings. They eat raw meat. They carry battle axes. They got horns on their helmet. They listen to fucking Viking metal. They drink the blood of their enemies from fucking horns. And they can't withstand an attack from the fucking Usos that looked like they were stealing grandma's fucking purse walking out of Pathmark. Are you fucking serious? This was an attack that halted a tag team title opportunity? Can you imagine? Can you imagine being Ivar, Eric, Jimmy, and Jey Uso, knowing that you're supposed to be on the card to fly 18 hours to Saudi Arabia from the United States to ultimately be told when you get there, yeah, we're not going to do your match. You're going to do a pre-match attack, and we're going to do the match on SmackDown. Couldn't you leave these four guys in the United States? I know if I was one of those four guys, I'd be fucking absolutely pissed the fuck off. Really. So WWE, it's showing you how much they value the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. They don't mean jack shit. They're going to do this match on SmackDown because they got nothing else to do on SmackDown. If the Usos beat the Viking Raiders... What's going to happen next in a string of fucking weeks where WWE struggles creatively? They gave us Jimmy versus Eric. They gave me Jay versus Ivar, right? They even did a tag team match between these two teams, and the Usos won. But now, all of a sudden, we're getting another tag team match, this time for the titles, because if the Usos beat the Viking Raiders here, what would they have done After they beat the Viking Raiders, there is nobody else. There's nobody else in the division. You got the fucking lethal lovers. Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo. That's all you got. The New Day, forget about it. The New Day has seen their day. Their tag team division is fucking putrid. I don't get why WWE cares so little for tag team wrestling. This may be your WrestleMania match. WWE may be giving you for the next six weeks. I don't know. I don't know. The Usos are another big question mark. What are they going to be doing at WrestleMania? Said, four guys flew to Saudi Arabia to get beat up and not have a match. I'd be fucking pissed. And the attack, that's what stopped the match? Give me a break, Bruce. Give me a fucking break. Who the fuck are you kidding with this shit? My God. Brock Lesnar. Bobby Lashley. Austin Theory, Matt Riddle, AJ Styles, and Seth Rollins 
WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match. This was your main event of the evening. This match was supposed to be built around nobody else but Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar was going to be presented as the untouchable fucking beast. And that's exactly what WWE did. That's exactly what WWE portrayed here. So, they had everybody make their way out to the ring. It was going to be Rollins and Austin Theory to start. Lesnar was introduced last, which kind of threw me for a fucking loop. I thought Lesnar coming out last meant that he was actually going to be one of the first two participants in the Elimination Chamber. That did not happen. Austin Theory and Rollins were waiting in the ring, and then Lesnar was the last guy to enter his pod. He walked around all the other pods. He looked at Bobby Lashley. He looked at him through the pod. He marked him as an X. He put an X. He he did uh w- w- one of those uh, things where he he breathed on the on the pod, and then in his in his uh, own little way, he marked Bobby Lashley as an X, like he wants Bobby Lashley. He walked by Matt Riddle. Did not even acknowledge Matt Riddle. He walked by AJ Styles, and he kind of shimmied his way. Past AJ Styles, they had a great match a couple of years back. One of the better matches that Brock Lesnar's had in all of his WWE run. And then Austin Theory, Austin Theory and Seth Rollins, they're in the ring. He didn't give a shit about them. He was looking at them from his pod as he entered his pod. This match was designed around Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. We were reading the reports about twists and turns. At the Elimination Chamber. I did not expect the twist and turn to be Bobby Lashley gets taken out of the match. So how did it all start? Seth Rollins and Austin Theory started the match off. Theory hit a back suplex. And then he followed with a fisherman suplex. Rollins, he kicked out of a cover by Austin Theory. Rollins connected with some super kicks. And then he takes Austin Theory, picks him up in a powerbomb, and he, he pretty much buckle bombs him into the plexiglass where Bobby Lashley's pod is. Austin Theory goes flying into the pod. He knocks down Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley's looking around all dazed. And he's just laying there. The, the, the elimination chamber door opens, right? We see Adam Pierce, doctors, officials all in there taking Bobby Lashley out of the fucking match. And Bobby Lashley is removed from the Elimination Chamber. The announce team said Bobby Lashley was knocked into one of the steel beams inside of his pod and had to be taken out of the match. So the buzzer goes off. Matt Riddle joins as the third guy here. He goes right after Rollins, hits an exploder, a running senton. WWE officials are still checking on Bobby Lashley. As Riddle and Rollins are battling there, there was a great visual of them in Lashley's pod attending to him, and we got Rollins and Riddle on the top rope. Rollins hit a reverse suplex on Matt Riddle. Lashley was then taken out of the Elimination Chamber. AJ Styles comes in. He's number four inside the Elimination Chamber. Styles, he went right to do uh, something to Matt Riddle. On the top rope, Rollins fought him off. This eventually turned into a big Tower of Doom spot with Theory taking out both Styles and Rollins as they were jockeying for position on the top rope with Matt Riddle. Riddle then jumps off the top rope, hits a floating bro. Riddle started to do the Randy Orton mannerisms where he's on his knees doing the uh, RKO pose. Bobby Lashley, his buzzer goes off. Bobby Lashley was supposed to be number five. So, at this point, Riddle, he hears the buzzer going off. He looks at Lesnar. He thought that the buzzer wouldn't go off for Lashley because he's not there. The only logical thing would be for Lesnar to come into the match because Lashley's not there. But Lashley's buzzer goes off. So, Riddle is there. All right, Lesnar's going to have to wait the two minutes to come into the match. Lesnar, with the buzzer going off, starts kicking the plexiglass in his pod. He breaks the plexiglass, climbs out of the fucking pod, and absolutely destroys everybody and says, fuck this, I'm not waiting for the two minutes, 
I'm about to win this match and the WWE Championship. So he kicked out of his pod and he, he, he went immediately for Rollins. F5, he pinned F Rollins almost instantaneously. Rollins in the mud. Rollins is doing the best work of his career. And Rollins was treated like a fucking child. An afterthought, insignificance in this match with Brock Lesnar. One F5 and Seth Rollins is gone. After that, AJ Styles, one F5, almost back to back. He pinned Rollins and AJ Styles. Two former world champions in less than a minute, gone. So that leaves Riddle and Lesnar with Austin Theory. So he did the whole thing with Lesnar and Theory. He ran around. Actually, uh, Lesnar was, uh, he took out Riddle as well. I forgot, to, I forgot to mention he took out Riddle. Riddle connected with the floating bro, and Lesnar kicked the pod. He took out Rollins and Riddle with F5s, and then he finished AJ Styles. So all F5s, all F5s. One, two, three, uh, Rollins and Riddle and Styles, gone. So now we're left with Austin Theory and Brock Lesnar. So he's got his eyes on Austin Theory. They do this spot where he's running around the ring. He's trying to run away from Lesnar. Lesnar caught him, took him out with a snap German suplex that looked fucking brutal. I could imagine if this was the old chamber. Oh my goodness, man. Now you guys want to know why they padded the fucking thing. If this was the old chamber, Austin Theory would be paralyzed with the force of this fucking snap German suplex by Brock Lesnar. So, uh, Theory actually had some nice offense here. Gave Lesnar a low blow. Theory low blowed Lesnar. This opened up a little bit of a window for him to get some opportunity and some offense in. Landed a drop kick. Landed a DDT on Lesnar. Lesnar kicked out of the DDT attempt at one. So Theory's like, fuck this shit. He climbed up the cage. He was actually climbing through the chain link fence trying to get the fuck out of the elimination chamber. Lesnar climbed up there like fucking Godzilla and took him down, pulling him through the chain link fence. He took him on top of the pod, bashed his skull into the plexiglass above the pod three times. He was completely out of it. He's standing up there like Godzilla on top of the Empire State Building. He puts Austin Theory on his shoulders and F5s this guy off the fucking pod. And Austin Theory, you see the camera shooting from below. Fucking Austin Theory lands on the padding, thank Christ, on the floor of the chamber, completely murdered. Lesnar climbs down. He eventually pinned Theory to win. He didn't need to do anything else. And he wins the WWE Championships. Or the WWE Championship. The announcers quickly, quickly say that it's champion versus champion. And they did not specify that both titles would be on the line. You guys in the chat saying they did. They did not. Believe me, I was paying attention because I've been all over this story and what needs to happen and what WWE needs to do here. They did not specify that both titles would be on the line. They only went off the air saying it's champion versus champion. Lesnar, the WWE champion versus Roman Reigns, the universal champion. They did not specify that it would be title versus title. It's a completely different headline compared to what they gave us. This was the end of the Elimination Chamber. Brock Lesnar walked up the ramp and he bid farewell to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Absolutely mid, mid, mid level show. It did not feel important. It did not bring any importance to the Elimination Chamber on the road to WrestleMania. Once again, the Elimination Chamber is used as merely an aesthetic to build up WrestleMania season to be bigger than it is. And it itself continues to be disrespected every single year to a point where I don't even know if I ever want to see another Elimination Chamber. There's no creativity that went into the women's match. Both of these matches were built around 15 minutes. This is not the norm for the Elimination Chamber. It's not. Elimination Chamber matches usually go 30, 35, upwards towards 40 minutes. 
How are you supposed to create intrigue and importance for both elimination chambers and what they mean to the people who win them if they're determined in 15 minutes? Brian Danielson and fucking Lee Moriarty went 15 fucking minutes on, re- on Dynamite. I'm supposed to believe that the Elimination Chamber matches, both men and women, were determined in 15 fucking minutes? Why are you putting six individuals in a cage and there's barely any violence? The only reason why there was violence in the men's match is because Brock Lesnar's middle name is fucking violence. It's unreal to me. It's unreal to me. I don't believe it. WWE gave Lesnar the Royal Rumble. WWE gave Lesnar the WWE Championship inside the Elimination Chamber. Why did we have Lesnar win the Royal Rumble? We're getting the same fucking thing with WWE every single Mania season. Let's give it to a big name and then fuck up the build. Lesnar won the WWE Championship. Now what? Now what? Does it need to be title versus title? Does it need to be title versus title? That's the question I've been asking myself. What are you doing with the title versus title match between these two guys if you're not ending the brand split? What does this mean for Roman? Is he going to be on Raw and SmackDown? Is he going to give up one title and then defend the other? Is he going to retire the Universal Championship? Are we going to have one world champion? I need to have answers to these questions. Because if you're not doing title versus title and ending the brand split, I don't really see the reason behind why you're doing this match. I don't. And then ultimately, if that's the case, you gave Brock Lesnar the Royal Rumble for no reason. You gave him the Royal Rumble for no reason. You want to build intrigue on the road to WrestleMania. You don't really make the title look all that important if you put it on Lesnar, drop it to Lashley, only to put it on Lesnar to drop it to Roman. The WWE title is being treated like a hot potato and it's not necessarily making the WWE championship feel important. What do we do here? What do we do here? Bobby Lashley's clearly getting a title match. He was taken out of the chamber and it wasn't his fault. He was the champion going in and did not have a opportunity to defend that title. WWE more than likely is continuing the Lashley and Lesnar feud going into WrestleMania and that will be Bobby Lashley's opportunity at the WWE Championship again, which I, I don't know how you I don't know how you work your way around that. Clearly, WWE needed to crown a champion, but them taking the belt off of Bobby Lashley for something that he did not cause himself, it sounds ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. The whole concept of WWE desperately trying to make one guy you know, like Lesnar and another guy like Lashley, both look strong, is the ruination of pro wrestling logic and storyline. There has to be one winner and one loser. There has to be. Making both guys look strong, the way that WWE desperately tried to keep Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar looking strong, they don't want Lashley losing. I mean, it's not really a good feeling for the fans. There's got to be one winner and one loser. Sometimes making both guys look strong actually makes the show overall look weak. That's the way I see it. I think if it would have came down to Lashley and Lesnar and Lesnar got his win back, that would have been great. But the only reason why this happened is because WWE's put all their eggs in the Bobby Lashley basket against Lesnar, and they haven't built anybody else up as a credible threat to Bobby Lashley. Kevin Owens? No. Edge? No. AJ Styles? No. Seth Rollins? No. None of those matches for Bobby Lashley really resonate with me as a WrestleMania match. So they're left with nobody but Lesnar. Lesnar is the centerpiece of WrestleMania. He's getting Lashley, and he's getting Reigns. This is all WWE's fault. Bobby Lashley was made into the WWE Champion, given the WWE Championship with no fucking plans in place for anybody else but Brock Lesnar. This is WWE's fault. This is creative's fault. They backed themselves into a fucking corner. They put all their eggs in the Lashley basket, and there was nobody else but Brock Lesnar at the end of the day. Lashley versus Lesnar at WrestleMania night one makes the most sense. Could it happen on Raw? 
Yes. Should it happen on Raw? No, it should not. We've all wanted this match to originally take place at WrestleMania, title or no title. Now you have the opportunity to do it. And Bobby Lashley has no opponents but Brock Lesnar. I don't give a shit about Bobby Lashley building a new feud with somebody on Raw in six weeks. So give me Lesnar. Give me Lesnar. It's stupid that he's got to go get his title back that he never lost. But Lesnar versus Lashley for the WWE Championship at night one at WrestleMania on Saturday with the winner beat, uh, the winner uh, moving on to Sunday to wrestle Roman Reigns, which will ultimately be Brock Lesnar because they're not going to change that match. So you're theoretically making the, the Saturday night main event predictable and then you're making the Sunday night match predictable because nobody expects Roman to lose. WWE, man, the most stupendous WrestleMania of all time, supposedly. It's the most predictable WrestleMania of all time. This and the predictability around it, you almost can fucking get a sense guaranteed that Dwayne Johnson's coming out at the end of WrestleMania. Because why, uh, why would they be doing this, which is so predictable, and then not deliver on The Rock? We've seen two years of Roman Reigns dominate. Who's going to step up to the plate and try and take down the Tribal Chief? After Lesnar's done, there's nobody. There's nobody. Is Lesnar going to go away? More than likely. What's going to happen with Reigns? Is he going to Raw to wrestle guys over there? Is he going to wrestle people on SmackDown as well? You might as well just merge the titles, one world champion and the brand split, and enough of this mediocre fucking WWE weekly television bullshit. There's no need to operate with two rosters anymore. None. That would be the, the best way to go about it. But Roman's going to win both of those titles. He will have now ascended to absolute godlike status. And then The Rock is going to come out and teach Roman a lesson. And even Rock, at the end, will fall to the Tribal Chief. Dwayne Johnson's not winning the World Championship. It would make no sense for him to come back for one match and win the World Championship. That's going to be a WrestleMania main event in Los Angeles. And you've seen the seeds planted for all of that, starting slowly with Lesnar winning the championship. Lesnar versus Roman, title versus title. Hopefully they detail that because they did not specify that tonight. Champion versus champion, title versus title. Both titles need to be on the line. Otherwise, you're giving us a Survivor Series main event at WrestleMania. Meanwhile, at Survivor Series in November, you constantly tell us the only time of the year where Raw versus SmackDown champions meet in the ring. Champion versus champion. Clearly not. Because you'll be doing, theoretically, the same thing that you do at Survivor Series at WrestleMania. You need to differentiate the meanings of both of those matches. If we get it at Survivor Series, it's champion for champion. The titles are not on the line. You're going to do this same fucking concept at WrestleMania. Motherfucker, both of those championships better be on the line. That is your Elimination Chamber post-show. Hopefully you guys enjoyed what you heard here today. Let me know what you guys think down below in the, in the comment section. Whether it's the live stream chat right now. Whether it is the comment section after the video publishes to YouTube. I appreciate you guys very much. For joining me, making off the script number one in the community once again. Your number one destination for all WWE talk right here on YouTube. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up. We got 1,300 plus thumbs up. Can we try for 1,500 before we get out of here, man? If you guys are in the chat and have not hit the thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it because it helps out the video tremendously once it publishes to YouTube. Get those Super Chats in. We're going to read them right now and end the stream with your Super Chats. Continue to become a VIP here on the channel. Hit that Join button down below. Go check out all the other videos you might have missed on the channel on the homepage right now. Follow me on social media at JD from NY206. That's Twitter and Instagram. And go check out my sponsor for today's show. That's Audible. AudibleTrial.com slash scripts. 30 days free of their service and one free audio book of your choice. Let's get into the Super Chat. It's going to start off first with Michelle Moran with a $2 Super Chat. Roman 1, VKM does have one living brain cell left. Yes, he does. I'm very thankful that Bill Goldberg did not win the WWE Universal Championship. That would have been fucking disaster written all over Sonny Singh with a UK 449 Super Chat. 
My girlfriend, Wednesday Adams, was so happy that Goldberg lost to Roman. She jumped all over the place and she screamed my whole neighborhood heard. Well, I'm not sure it's that big of a deal, Sonny, but uh, I'm glad your girlfriend is wise enough to know that Goldberg should also be in an old age home. Manny with a $50 super chat. Thank you so much, Manny. Hope you, JD, and all the chat are having an awesome weekend. A small token to show my support, appreciation, and love for the channel and the OTS family. Manny, thank you so much, brother. I hope you have a great weekend as well. Tony Brown with a 499 Super Chat, my boy Tony Brown. Too predictable, no surprise, and no booty meat. Yeah, Tony, the booty meat was covered up in Saudi Arabia, bro. You're going to have to wait till Monday night to see that booty meat that you enjoy. Thank you, brother. Michelle Moran with a $20 Super Chat. What a way to bury most of the top guys on Raw. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a triple threat match with Lashley added at WrestleMania. No. We've seen a triple threat match with Roman last year. I don't want to see another triple threat match this year, man. That is an easy way out, and that is as uncreative as it comes. We've seen Brian and Edge with Roman last year. There's no reason to do a triple threat match this year. You're not upsetting anybody if you give Le- Le- Lashley and Lesnar the main event of night one. You're not upsetting anybody. That's a true, genuine main event of WrestleMania in by itself with no title on the line. Just let them go. The match at the Royal Rumble was kind of disappointing. Hopefully we don't get the same thing to happen at WrestleMania. If it's in the main event, it may be a little bit better. But knowing WWE, I'm not holding my breath. This was a glorified Raw or SmackDown. VKM is not ending the brand split, so title versus title is meaningless. Yes. The title versus title thing needs to end the brand split. Otherwise, I don't really get a sense of why it's happening. Roman's going to do what? Hold both titles, but be on one brand? Or is he going to work both brands because WWE is creatively inept in building up new superstars? Jeremy Harris with a $5 super chat. He leaves no message. Jeremy, why are you entering the venue? And why are you shy without saying hello? I don't like that, bro. You at least got to say hello, bro. Oh, he's got a $10 super chat. There you go. He gave me a 5 and then a 10 $15 by Jeremy Harris. I'm sorry, bro. I take, about, I, I take back what I just said. JD, you're awesome. I started watching you since the Royal Rumble. Ever since, I've been watching all the wrestling podcasts. You keep it real. Keep up the good work, man. No one sings a louder tune than you. Jeremy Harris. I right, listen, man. Shout out to you, Jeremy Harris. Noah Mason with a $10 super chat. Listen to all the videos you've uploaded since Vengeance Day review at work today, and it made things so much better. Thank you for all the hard work you consistently do. You fucking rock. Noah, cheers to you, brother. Thank you so much, man. I'm glad I could keep you entertained during those uh, long and boring work hours. Felix Krug with a $20 in UK super chat. What's up, JD? Just wanted to show my support for the channel. Been a fan since 2015. And I hope you keep up the great work. Greetings from Germany. Thank you, brother. Kairos with a $2 super chat. Don't really watch the E, but I like hearing your takes. I appreciate that, man. I'd rather you guys be here and not watch the show. I'll always give it to you like you deserve. AMG2 with a 179 in UK Super Chat. Roman versus Lesnar versus Lashley at WrestleMania. No. Lesnar Lashley, night one. Lesnar reigns, night two. It's not that difficult to figure out. Title versus title, Roman versus Lesnar. Why are they doing title versus title? I have no idea. If it doesn't end the brand split, I don't see the reason behind it. Because right now, the only reason is to make Roman Reigns a god. That's it. Mohammed Abu with a 40. Roman Reigns, god of Saudi Arab and universe. Ooh, ah. 
Thank you, Mohammed Abu. Gyro Gonzalez with a Mexican $20 super chat. Charlotte in ring performance was awful. She's always awful. Most of the time she's awful. I, I shouldn't say always, but most of the time she's awful, yes. Harshav. One, uh, 200 in Super Chat. It's not 200 US, but it's 200 in his currency. Stayed up till 130 for the twists and turns, but what did we get? Absolutely nothing. Liv Morgan takes a big fat L. Predictable from start to end. Good or bad predictable? It was a bad predictable. You be the judge, JD. Cheers. I am the judge, jury, and executioner here. My friend, this is a bad predictable. Haywood with a $2 super chat. I care zero about Roman winning both titles. Fuck WWE. It's merely uh, about Roman being built up as the god of WWE, man. That's exactly what they're doing. Paul Van Tassel with the $2 super chat. Becky Lynch and Lita is the best match of the night. I absolutely agree. Perfect Cell 71 with a Canadian 1399 Super Chat. JD been on Team JD since 2012. Wondering if Mr. 9 to 5 will make a return for 2K22. Keep up the great work, sir. Uh, at this point, Perfect Cell, I don't know if I'm buying the game. Destiny 2 Witch Queen comes out on Tuesday, and I will be playing nothing but that. The Shadow 78. 199 Super Chat. Styles, Rollins, and Rule were treated as jokes. Yes, they were. Eliminated back to back to back. Haywood with a $2 Super Chat. I also care zero about Dwayne returning. Well, that's what they're getting, bro. They're getting Rock to fill SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. The fact that he was there to open the Super Bowl... It's just a foreshadowing that he will be main eventing WrestleMania in that same building next year. Eric Bambro becomes a member. Eric, what are you drinking, brother? Thank you for becoming a VIP. Leo Gallimara with a $2 super chat. The Mania card is severely underwhelming. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Ronda Charlotte, boring. Becky Bianca, boring. Lesnar Reigns, eh. Should be a good match, but I'm well past caring at this point. Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Miz and Logan Paul versus the Mysterios. The most stupendous WrestleMania of all time, they say. Sure thing. We got Cal with a two-month membership. Glad to finally be a VIP in the venue. Thank you, Cal. Also with a $5 super chat. Been a fan since 20 or 30,000 subscribers. Love the content. Keep telling it the way it is, brother. OTS for life. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Triple M with the 199 super chat. Destiny 2 Witch Queen hype. I'm ready, bro. I'm ready. I'm so ready. Scott Lewis with a Canadian $20 Super Chat. Bring back Money in the Bank at Mania, and whoever wins the Battle Royal on the pre-show should get the final spot. It would be better than a trophy. Keep up the great work, JD. You know what, Scott Lewis? I like that idea. I like that idea, man. Jesus! Tried to watch WWE's Saudi show today, but I just don't find any interest in the storylines, and it's way too overproduced. Revolution! Can't come any sooner. That's something that the fucking virgins and geeks on social media don't really understand. A lot of people get turned off by the overproduction of WWE, man. It don't even, it don't even feel like a wrestling show. I want my wrestling to be raw, gritty, and dirty. That's why a lot of people are attracted to AEW. Jason X Cross with a $20 super chat. I hope Moss is okay. I hope this is the end of the trauma known as Goldberg. Wishful thinking, though, but please let the Lesnar-Reigns match be a unification match. Yes, it needs to be. It should be. It won't be, though. 
Game over, brother, with a $10 super chat. Road to Mania, but man, these WrestleManias nowadays miss it when it was must-see. When it was just strictly current stars. They got to rely on these part-timers and legends. Keep killing it, JD. Hashtag OTS. You know, game over, they, they think that they're bigger than they really are. You know, they think they're mainstream. WWE is not as mainstream as they think they are. Not enough to fill 100,000 seats. They want to take the cheap way out and get by. It's like that fucking jock in high school who wants to fucking be the most popular kid in the the entire school. Right? And he's got the good looks and he's got all the girls. He's got the scholarships to go play fucking professional sports, right? But his grades are lacking. And if he fails, he's not going to get that college scholarship. WWE thinks that they're bigger and better than everybody. They think they're big enough to fill at t Stadium with their current roster. They're not. Them using all these stars and thinking that they can fill at t Stadium nowadays is a joke. What happens when Lesnar's not there? What happens when Ronda is not there anymore? What happens when Stone Cold doesn't want to do it anymore? Right? Or they can't get these WrestleMania uh, celebrities to come in. It's a joke. It's them cheating the system and getting by with absolutely no effort. If they care, they built up. The, they would build up their roster. If they cared, they don't. Game over. Also becomes a new member. Thank you, bro. What are you drinking tonight, man? First round is on me. Saints 2025. I thought I heard them say the winner of the Women's Elimination Chamber would main event. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Maybe Lesnar and Lashley open the show. And then we get Ronda and Charlotte to close the show. I don't I wouldn't do it that way. I would open with Ronda and Charlotte and do Lash, uh, Lashley and Lesnar in the main event. How long is it going to go? 10 minutes max? Leo Gallimara with a $5 super jet. Sonya and Naomi. I quit match at Mania. Naomi puts her career on the line versus Sonya, putting her GM career on the line. Best match at Mania for the women. I like that. Oh, WWE is as creative as you, man. Haley Lucas with a $5 super chat. Lita deserves a Mania match after that performance. I would not mind it. They're all in on the part-timers anyway, so let's do it. Vicky becomes an 11-month VIP. Thank you, Vicky. You're almost halfway there for a gold VIP status. Reach my 11-month milestone, but also, I love Liv Morgan's Britney Spears' oops, I did it again look. She did look good. She did look good. And Vicky with a $10 super chat. I just got home from work, so I'm watching it now. Thanks. For keeping me entertained, I'm trying to go back home to New York, but my mom told me not yet with everything that's going on in New York. What's going on in New York? What the hell is going on in New York that I don't know about? The city has mask mandates and vaccination status. As soon as you venture out of the city, none of that really matters. The restrictions are eased. Long Island and upstate. I think it's all right. World of Wrestling with a $5 Super Chat. Dude, watching Elimination Chamber right now, wishing CM Punk could give me a GTS to end my misery from the tag team match with Ronda Rousey. Yes, it was fucking dreadful. It was dreadful. Say Ja with a 999 Super Chat. The Vikings look like dorks. Always thought they did. Sorry, I believe they look like fucking geeks as well, man. They come out doing this fucking thing, right? They do this fucking pounding in the chest. Triple H made them look like monsters. Vince McMahon made them look like fucking cartoon characters. Jeremy Lewis with the $10 Super Chat. Such a stupidly predictable show. There are more twists and turns while rearranging my sock drawer than WWE had in the chamber today. By the way, I'm a month sober, so I hope Jesse can play Barista as well. 
Cheers to you, Jeremy. And yes, I've taught Jesse how to make a cappuccino. Game over, brother, with a $10 super chat. This new chamber is PG chamber. No more metal floor grating, just padding. I guess to protect wrestlers now. Yes, indeed. Uh, but the chamber from 2002 to 2015 was beautiful. Chamber matches from 02 to 06 were classic. Yeah, you gotta protect the you gotta protect the performers, man. There's nobody that wants to go in there and bang around on fucking metal and still greats. It's it's just insane. Especially going into WrestleMania, man. Not really a good look. Haywood with a two dollar super chat. Okay, so Roman beats Dwayne. Then what? I don't know. You think WWE has an answer to that? Of course they don't. Nick Pickvet with a 199 super chat. I'll have a shot of peanut butter whiskey. You got it, brother. The PB whiskey is always flowing here from Screwball. Christian with a 999 super chat. I was right about Roman and Brock winning. Yes, you were. You were not the only one, brother. Terry Allen with a 199 super chat. JD, as always, you're the best in the business. Terry Allen. I know. Brandon James Shea with a $2 super chat. I like Roman Reigns. He's the best wrestler now. Yes, he's the biggest star in the industry. No question. Christian with a $4.99 super chat. I was right about Roman and Brock winning. Yes, you were, bro. Yes, you were. You just said that before. Bro, X-Men, $5 super chat. There are ways that you can build up your top stars without burying your whole roster. It's just sad to watch. They don't give a fuck. Lesnar and Reigns are selling them WrestleMania. They don't give a fuck about anybody else. Wherever they slot anybody else is inconsequential to them. Big Kane, 23, with a 199 Super Chat. JD, enjoying your show. Are you watching Impact tonight? <laughs> You're funny, man, Big K. Listen, bro, I'm going to do something else tonight instead of watching Impact. Nobody watches Impact. <laughs> oh, man, you're a funny guy, Big K. Thank you for your 199, man. I appreciate you. Liquid Sun with a $5 super chat. Hey, JD, big fan of the show. I appreciate your honesty. Can't wait for Destiny 2 Witch Queen Tuesday. You and me both, brother. You and me both, man. And Tyrek Jackson with a $5 super chat. Goldberg deserved that treatment, but somebody else should have gotten Goldberg's spot. I mean, people have been getting Goldberg's spot. They usually end up with an L on their record. It doesn't matter. Roman's beaten everybody. He's beaten everybody, man. Cabo Stretch with a fight all super chat. WWE booking is seriously like banging your head on the wall. That's what you get when Bruce is in charge, bro. What do you expect when Bruce Pritchard is in charge? You guys should know this by now. Anyway, when 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 this music hits, man, you know exactly what's coming. Uh, Jesse, make sure the venue's locked up, bro. I'm not going to be available all weekend, bro. Just make sure the floors are clean. The ashtrays are, uh... Check the ashtrays, man. I don't need people fucking uh, smoking in the venue, all right? And, and do me a favor. Give Bob outside, behind the dumpster, man. Give him the scraps from Titus's kitchen tonight. I heard he enjoys when you go out there and make small talk with him, bro. Anyway, guys, listen. I've been working my ass off all week, man. I'm fucking... I'm wrestled out, man. I'm wrestled out. I'm about to hop in the shower when I get home. I'm about to open up a cold beverage and enjoy some Yellowstone. I think that's what we're going to do. Anyway, guys, thank you so very much for uh, all of your support. Thank you for the 2,800 in the venue tonight. 
number one in the IWC, as always. The Elimination Chamber, mid. The road to WrestleMania now has six weeks remaining. WrestleMania is shaping up to be a very subpar mania as per usual with WWE. The twists and turns tonight were Bobby Lashley being taken out of the Elimination Chamber and Brock Lesnar winning the WWE title. Diablo with a $2 Super Chat. Are you going to stream Destiny? If I can get into the servers on Tuesday, yes. Go check out all the other videos that you might have missed on the channel, guys. Important. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you for the Super Chats. And follow me on Twitter, at JD from NY206, Twitter and Instagram. Guys, I need two things before I get out of here. Number one, I need those guitar emojis in the chat. And when you hear that guitar solo, I need that music on max. Guys, thank you for such a great week. I'll see you back live on Monday from Monday Night Raw right here on Off The Script. I'll see you guys later.